Hello, Twin Minds here, and today I'll be judging Beacon Pines by the cover. This is a cute and colorful and even creepy choose-your-own-adventure game where you play as both the main character as well as the reader of the magical book the story takes place in. It recently succeeded on Kickstarter and has a demo available while we wait for more details. I have a bit of a soft spot for colorful adventure games, and this one looks incredibly promising. So let's get into the demo and see what story unfolds. Ooh. On a dark and stormy night, we have a new story. Dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you come across, it is far from ordinary. You may therefore have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter 1. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he is here for a reason. Ooh, lovely transition. Hey, Dad. The morning light filtered through the trees onto the gravestone. How are things going? A gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. I was six years old when you died. And it's been six years now. From here on out, you'll have been gone longer than you were here. It feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this tree was your favorite spot in the world. Me too. Hey, Luca. Rolla was Luca's closest friend. I knew I'd find you here. Well, after I banged on your door till your grand answered. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. And after I checked the pond. And climbed up on the treehouse. Then I knew I'd find you here. Rolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Oh, yeah, right. You and your mom always did this at your dad's birthday. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone, too. She's not gone. She's just... missing. Sorry, I meant to say since she went missing. She's going to come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Okay, Dad. See you next time. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. I love this. I mean, the art style, first off, is fantastic. Um, the storytelling, so far, is great. Um, lots of nice tone and inflection in, in the writing style. And the music is delightful. Oh, we can play with these. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tickle. So I, I do know that you get these little charms with words on them. And then these uh, play out kind of like a choose your own adventure, um, fill in the word kind of thing. So we have Tickle. Wonderful. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. 
Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. I mean, I already know, but this is also fun to do. <laughs> okay, I'm done with that. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. You know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda? That place has always been empty since... Since before the foul harvest? Yeah. Who would even want to poke around in a place like that? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. What do you expect to find there? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere. And it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my pa throttled me? This is a farming chicken coop sort of deal. Flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I've got your back. Thanks, Rollo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend the first day of summer. I, I agree. That seems like a fascinating thing. Under the shade of an old straw hat, the scarecrow held a knowing smirk. One of its button eyes had been pecked out by a brash crow, creating the impression of an eternal wink. That knowing scarecrow knows things. Hey, Jack. Oink. Morning, Jill. Other oink. Salutations, Dr. Hassenpfeffer III. Oink. <laughs> All right, I just have to tell Gran, and then we can head out. What are you going to tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your Gran smells kind of funny. Suit yourself. I won't be long. Gran smells kind of funny. She got that old lady smell. It's how, it's how old ladies smell. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They have been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. All right, let's go exploring. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flower fabric. The drawer was packed with his dad's old baseball card collection. An urge to collect things was passed on to Luca. <laughs> I know that feeling well. Ah, uh, comfy. Ooh, we got a ponder charm. Lovely. <laughs> we just slide off the chair. Oh, that's great. Gran had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house as if by grandmotherly obligation. Pardon me while I explore. Just some dusty knickknacks. Okay. Uh, let's go through here. Yeah. Oof, something has gone wrong in there. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty, empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. Junk! Perfect. Hmm. Granted, it'd kill me if I left that running, but uh, I can't seem to turn it off, so... Whoops. This is absolutely delightful so far. Although I do know that there is some sort of creepy element. So I'm waiting for that ball to drop. Oh my, this is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of the charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. 
There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. You can use the various charms you have collected to alter events and thus completely rewrite the fate of Beacon Pines. This is no small thing. So step forth, dear reader, and grasp hold of destiny itself. I, I shall. In the short time since her arrival, Gran had set about remaking the garden. The wild bushes Lucas spent his childhood playing in had been replaced by patches of fresh soil. Ah, we have Gran. Hey Gran, I'm gonna go... For Pete's sake, go change out of your pajamas before you say another word. But... But nothing. Inside clothes are for out inside. And outside clothes are for outside. Lucas stared at his feet and muttered under his breath. Mom always let me wear my pajamas in the garden. Well? Eleanor isn't here, is she? Now go upstairs, change, and then we'll talk. <laughs> shoo shoo. Right, of course, I forgot about the pajamas. Alright, fine. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. I have left the water running still. Whoops. I like that, that that's still running, though, because that, that keeps in mind all the stuff you've interacted with. Luca paused at his parents' parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Ah. A new word. Oh dear. This isn't as messy as I thought it would be. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Chill. Lay back and chill. Grand's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. I understand. Grand's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Good kid, reading. Alright, I think that's it in here. Now, I'm currently playing with um, keyboard and mouse, or rather, just keyboard. Um, there doesn't appear to be any mouse interaction, at least as of yet. Um, it looks very much like this was designed for a controller, so bear that in mind. Okay, I'm going to go hang out with Rolo for the day. See you later! Hold up now. Where are you and Rolo headed exactly? Oh, nowhere special. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. We were just going to go heart for the day. Ponder, hide, chill. Uh, we're going to go play hide and seek. We're just going to go hide for the day. Hide? Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. Yeah, I guess Rolo bet some other kids that we could beat them at hide and seek. Aren't you a little old for that? It's not like there's much else to do around here. Well, make sure you boys are done playing your little game in time for supper. All's well that ends well. Shoo shoo. I love the cane, the cane motion. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A simple word can change the course of history. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. B. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any, po at any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. This conversation with Gran seems innocent enough. The perfect opportunity to, to experiment with rewriting things. Ooh. 
Ooh. We're just gonna go chill. We're just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are built on the truth. You boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. We stick to what we're good at. Well, make sure you're done chilling in time for supper. Easy. Interesting. Did that change anything in the Chronicle? Back to where you left off. A grand, a, a grand jury. Nice, cute. Um, I, I mean, we could try the last one, but I'm pretty sure the dialogue is going to be very similar. But let's try ponder. We're just going to go ponder for the day. Oh, really? What are you boys going to ponder on such a lovely day, exactly? This was Luca's chance to sell his alibi. Um, you know, big stuff. Small stuff. Medium. Mostly medium pondering. Nailed it. Well, make sure you don't overburden yourself with a preponderance of pondering. Huh? Oh, forget it. Off with you now. Nice. And then um, I don't I don't see anything different yet. So because this is an, an inconsequential choice, I don't think it's going to do anything yet. But this looks more like a branching tree where we could potentially have multiple endings, multiple paths to follow, and be able to change our choices to see how different things play out. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. We're going to stick with the pondering, though, because I like that dialogue a lot. And the water's still running. Don't mind me. Oh, look at his little tippy tap feet. Come on, come on. Woo! <laughs> Dang it, Rollo. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. Fair. We have a whole bunch of villagers. We have a fat snoring pig man. We have a rhino lady with her uh, lion and bunny kids, I guess. Sure. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to see everything at the moment, so pardon me if I don't explore all of the things. Um, let's talk to this one. Looks like you guys are in a hurry. I'm just going to keep uh, keeping an eye on my boat. The SS Mary Times. Alright. So I am not going to be able to talk to everyone. I'm going to look for our buddy Rolo. But there's a lot to do here. A lot of people to talk to. A lot of potential for expanding story, which is great. The Beacon Beacon. I like the name of that. I'm assuming that's the uh, the newspaper or something. Luca, just the fella I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, what's up? Oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Ooh. Have no fear, we can always return later when using the, using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Yeah. So as you find more charms in the game, you can go back and change your choices. Ooh. Ooh, the potential. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Have you seen my idiot brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well... Not really, no. Can't say that I have. Can't say or won't say. Come on, Roxy, would I lie to you? Luca, wait up. I almost forgot to tell you. Roxy might be lurking around here. This is one of her favorite places to stand around and be useless. Rolo? So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rolo. <laughs> Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? What, you're not, you're not scared, are you? She's harmless. And stupid. 
And she's right around that corner, isn't she? Don't mind me, just over here lurking uselessly. Oh, hey, sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? Couldn't help but notice you snuck out this morning before breakfast. Wasn't hungry. Also couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Must have slipped my mind. Thanks for letting me know. Anyways, Luke and I have places to be, so if you don't mind... Oh, I do mind. I'm not going to catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and feed those chickens, or I haul you home myself. Rollo froze as Roxy took a step towards him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little... chill. Come on, Roxy. This is the first day of summer and the sun's shining. We just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Pa always says, tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Oh, rats. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. Full report. So, Fitz. What are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Just nope. Duke Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines. Never underestimate what a great man can do on his own. Hmm. A bit much, if you ask me. Indeed. Oh, I should talk to Mr. Wilder before heading out. He might know something about the warehouse. Which one's Mr. Wilder? The important looking man with the cane and the monocle? Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about... News? The Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rolo thought he saw some lights over there last night. Hmm, Rolo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing. And change is a dangerous animal. Change, you say? Mm hmm. Hmm. We have a new word. So there's going to be a lot, a lot of digging to see if we can find out where all of these are useful. Now, they do have icons. So we've got the tickle has a moon icon, the ponder has a heart icon. So if we go back to, not, not that button, if we go back to this button, you can see the different choices have different options. And it does show you which ones are available. Um, so chill, it's got two icons and only the triangle applies here. Whereas only the heart applies down here. So we still only have one option for this one. So that's fine. Um, back, there we go. And then uh, the new one that we just got. Change is a star thing. So I'm assuming we're going to have a new choice coming up at some point that needs a star thing and or a moon thing for the tickle. All right. Can I carry on? Nun Creed's Drugstore. Got a bookshop. Deals, deals, deals. All right. Miss Novak's bookstore was often closed after until after lunch. Rummaging through the dusty piles of books was one of Luca's favorite ways to kill time. I... As well. Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nuncreed. I was just on my way to... I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. Hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will, uh, will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. A promise Grant regretted the second it was made. Will do. 
She is a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. Uh, gotta go! <laughs> Sweeter than any jam on earth. Oh my. Oh my. The phone booth was brand new. Part of the town... The town's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It doesn't see much use. Fair enough. Ooh. We have spookiness. We have bees. I can't interact with the bees. Oh. Ooh. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weep Wood. Okay. No turning back now. Caution, electrified fence. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rolo do if he was here? Luca often asked himself what Rolo would do, so that he could rule out that option. I'm definitely not touching that thing. Probably a solid option. I have a berry mushroom thing? I don't know why I have a berry mushroom thing, but I have a berry mushroom thing in my hand. I have a dead wheel. Alright, I guess we can go this way. I no longer have the berry mushroom thing, so that's... Um, yeah. Um, we have toxic barrels. That's probably a bad thing, right? Alright, can I do anything with this? Ow! As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Oh. Ah. That's two. One more to go. Nice. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Okay. Moment of truth. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Okay, so Rolo wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There was only one way to find out. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. There is much more to this demo, but I think this is the perfect little cliffhanger to end it on. That will be this episode of By the Cover. This is Beacon Pines. I found this game to be intriguing, delightful, fantastic visuals and audio, and great storytelling, which I would hope so for a game about a magical book. The demo is available on Steam if you want to try it for yourself, and let me know what you think of it either in the comments or in the Discord linked in the description below. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.